Welcome to Maundy Thursday. I trust you enjoyed the reflection from Graham Kendrick, Meekness and Majesty. This land is God's land, and God's spirit dwells here. I acknowledge the Wetherong people, the traditional custodians of this land in Geelong, and the girl. Together may we be willing to serve each other, as Jesus calls us to be united as a people and a girl. Let's open in prayer, drawn from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he listens to my prayers for help. He paid attention to me. So I will call to him for help as long as I live. What can I give the Lord for all the good things he has given to me? I will give him a drink offering for saving me, and I will pray to the Lord. In front of all of his people, I will give the Lord what I promise. The death of one that belongs to him is precious to the Lord. Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the son of your female servant. You have freed me from my chains. I will give an offering to show thanks to you. And I will worship you. In front of all your people, I will give you what I have promised. I will do this in the temple courtyards in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Let us pray as we come to a time of reflection in the gospel. God of love, we gather to remember that especially this special evening, when you gathered the disciples in the upper room, and despite what was coming, you took time to be this servant host, washing their feet, breaking bread and sharing wine, offering prayer for them and their world. Help us to pause this evening and reflect. This evening, as the darkness draws around us. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them right to the end. It was supper time. The devil by now had Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, firmly in his grip, all set for the betrayal. Jesus knew that the Father had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, set aside his robe and put on an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered, You don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted, You're not going to wash my feet, ever. If I don't wash you, you can't be part of what I'm doing. Master, said Peter, not only my feet, then wash my hands, wash my head. Jesus said, If you've had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now, and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean, but not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him. That's why he said not every one of you. After he had finished washing their feet, he took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. Then he said, Do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, washed your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I have done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. And an employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life.
So, having heard the gospel, let's have some time for reflection. We begin the Easter weekend of 2020 tonight. I suspect none of us would have experienced this pinnacle of the Christian calendar as we are experiencing it this year. In recent years, St Luke's Uniting Church has remembered the events of 2,000 odd years ago by acting them out. The entry with the crowd, foot, foot washing, a shared meal, using some of the foods Jesus would probably have shared with his disciples, and then some singing in the garden before the guards show up, brutally arrest Jesus and take him away. And then we were all to quietly drift away, the story left unfinished. But this year, as our world fears the unclean, and we are told to distance ourselves if we have to go out, let's take a closer look at how Jesus stopped, took water and a towel, and washed the disciples' feet. Back 2,000 years ago, most travel happened on foot. Only really rich people had a horse, a chariot. Roads and lanes formed as people and animals went between towns and villages. Although some Roman roads were paved most with dirt, and they were all dusty and contaminated with animal dung that was just left there. If it rained, they were muddy too. People wore sandals or thongs on their feet. But if you've ever been to a cattle or a sheep stockyard or a piggery, you could imagine what your sandals and feet would smell and look like after you've walked these sort of roads. And in our story tonight, Jesus and the disciples had arrived from a journey to this upper room. So the floors were probably wet stone. Now most hosts would have arranged for a servant or a young child to take a bowl of water and clean the guest's feet. It was the done thing. This is a yucky job. A bit like having to clean the toilet these days. Would you get down on your knees to remove these filthy sandals and clean the feet? And yet that is what Jesus did. Now we need to remember that Jesus knew that things were moving fast. The triumphant entry to Jerusalem, the coming meal that would involve betrayal from one of his team, a dark night and then violent arrest as he prays, brutally brutality from the soldiers, interrogation through the night, a sham trial, and then being paraded before the king and then the governor, all within 24 hours or so. And yet Jesus pauses, well aware of his status as God's son, takes the bowl and the towel and cleans each person's feet of the worst muck that they had picked up during the day. Peter is shocked. This is not something the teacher should do. He's embarrassed. You'll never wash my feet. But Jesus is clear. Dirty feet need washing clean. Just like lives contaminated with sin need washing with his blood that would be poured out on the cross less than 24 hours later. None of us can pretend we do not need Jesus to clean us. In the following verses, Jesus calls the disciples and us to put aside our status, our pride, and get on our knees to show our fellow humans how much God loves them by mirroring what Jesus did with the water and the towel, the lowest servant's job. Let us be creative during this weekend and the days and the weeks to come in how we share that contact and servanthood others, in our family and in our community. May we keep the image of Jesus, 
gentle washing and drying of feet, a gift of love as we go into this Easter weekend. As we draw to a close, let's have a prayer as we go. Loving and compassionate God, daily you are there at our waking and there at the close of the day. Tonight we remember your love as you took the bowl and the towel and cleansed the disciples of the grime of their day, preparing them for your gift of love. Help us to put aside our pride and our prejudices. Take up the bowl and towel and serve our brothers and sisters in so many ways, even while we feel so far apart. Brothers and sisters, go in peace into the night. For much is yet to come as we remember God's grace to us through Jesus' sacrifice.